Here we go, another giveaway for you wonderful viewers, the best audience on YouTube. You know why? Because you watch the show, that's why. Here's the giveaway, Map Split. This is our bodybuilder-inspired workout program, and here's how you get free access. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours, subscribe to this channel, and turn on your notifications. If we like your comment as the best comment among all the comments, we'll notify you, and then you get free access to Maps Split. Also, before we sh start the show, we are running a huge promotion. We've taken MAPS Anabolic and combined it with the No BS six-pack formula. By the way, I created both those programs specifically to be combined together, so it's a great combination. We discounted the price tremendously, so you can get both for $59.99 only this month. So if you're interested, head over to mapsoctober.com. All right, here comes the show. So I was on his show. Well, he interviewed me yesterday. I don't know if it hasn't aired yet, but uh, uh, I was on Ben's. It was always a good conversation with him. Uh, but, you know, he's asking me a lot of questions because, you know, you guys know Ben, right? He's super into <clears throat> optimizing and the most effective and what's the best. Did he know? do Did he do what I think he did? Because this is what? what he's notorious for. And he, he did this the very first time we ever met, and he always does this. He always likes to ask a question that he knows the answer to, and yeah. he's really just testing us. To see how smart we are. He's like yeah. a, a springboard. Yes. No, he you know springboards what? his questions actually, all the time. Actually, no, to be honest, he actually sent me, like three days before the interview, a list of things he wanted to talk about. Really? Yeah. Which, which, I'll tell you what, I've been on a million podcasts. You don't need to do that. I don't care. Bring up whatever That's you want. That's not an exaggeration at all. Yeah. Say what? That's yeah. Nice. No. <laughs> I've been a lot, right? I mean, at this point, it probably feels like it. I'm yeah, trying to get better about that. I'm yeah. really, maybe, I'm bad maybe, for doing that. It's probably closer to a, like a million of this. It's probably a bit closer to 50 to 100 or something like that. But, oh, no, you're over that. Because I'm I mean, at 50 to 100. Really? So yeah, like a thousand. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, you don't need to give me notes. Just ask me questions yeah, and I'll yeah. answer them. And if I don't know the answer, I'll say, I don't, know. I don't care if yeah. I don't know the answer. But he sent me a list. So no, he didn't do that, but he did do that the first time. We met him. He actually yeah. did it to you because you were the Jack guy, right? Yeah, yeah. He's like, so Adam, what do you think of break down remember? SARMs for me? Yeah, yeah. Like, what do you think of you know <laughs> selective andro you know, androgen receptor modulators? <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Luckily, you I go, Sal. Luckily, <laughs> <brought> <laughs> you Sal. What do you what do you, what do I Can think you about interpret that? this for me, Sal? <laughs> yeah. Hey, luckily, you brought your nerd with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Hold on yeah. a Bro, second. Do you know? I like I did a solo pod. You know how terrified I was to do a solo podcast with that guy? <laughs> I forgot that happened about way that. back in the day. I dude. forgot about that. Yeah, it was like, and it was because you know i'm trying to promote this thing and, and whatever and he graciously brought me on the show but like at the same time terrified because i know how he is like the same thing like i he was gonna throw an acronym out there yeah. or like some kind of like super random supplement. like related to your product yeah. too and yeah. justin's like i don't know what that what's means. the best supplement for like isometric training like i have no idea yeah. <laughs> you, know, you probably know yeah. didn't it take you a like Crazy like swim adventures and cold dips. And oh yeah, it was it was a wild time, dude. We yeah we mushroom foraging, mushroom foraging, <laughs> frisbee golfing, jumping in freezing cold water, watching uh, Kyle almost drown. Yeah, yeah he's, it, was, it was a good time. He's a he's a unique. Uh, he's a good guy. He's just he's a unique uh, individual. I love talking to the guy, but you know he he likes to ask questions like, what's the most effective form of you know X or what do you think of some you know kind of out there biohacking device or whatever. Yeah. Now, you know, my answers come from my experience, which is uh, like you guys, right? We co we train and coach people. Well, your answers come from your experience plus your knowledge of reading and stuff too. It's not like you're just experienced. Well, what, what I mean by that is if if it's just off my knowledge, here's a good here's a good one. So, you know, NCI is really good at this. NCI, which is a, a certification course that trains and coaches trainers, which now we kind of work with and are a part of. They do this really well where they teach their coaches how to be effective, not just how to give the right They're information. They're about application more yes. so than they are about science. They take the science, they disseminate that for the average coach or trainer, and then teach you how to apply that in the real world. If it's applicable at all. Right, right. Or, you know? yeah, or just say, forget it. We don't even need to deal with it. Right. That. So he asked me a question, for example, about uh, <clears throat> stim machines. What I think about stim machines and do they help build oh, muscle really? and that kind of stuff. Now, as somebody who's trained everyday regular people forever, uh, it's waste of money, total waste of time yeah. to look at the machines because the average person should, needs to focus on. That being said, I own one, and you probably own yeah. one too, right? Now, if you're like dialed, like if you're Ben, right, and you do everything, and I'm like trying to squeeze out 0.5 percent performance, I'm gonna look at all this other kind of weird stuff, and maybe I'll ap apply something like that. But STEM, I'd never really promote because the average person could fix their workout programming, could do some stuff with their diet. 
can sleep a little better, maybe do the better exercises versus the ones that are not as effective, which will give you external stimulation, which is not as effective as you, uh, basically promoting that. Yeah. It's not. And also I think it has everything to do with your budget. Like if you, if you got throwaway money, just like with supplements, I mean, I feel the same way even about that. Like, I mean, and you're a perfect example of that. Uh, uh, look at all the supplements you take. Yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about? (laughs) Yeah. We talk all the time about going through food, doing everything all naturally, but that's because, again, I think uh, you're we're trying to speak to the average person who's going, hey, I've got $300 budget that I can put towards my health and fitness this month. You know, should I get this supplement? Should I get that supplement? That person, I'm saying, no way. Dude. No, hire if a coach. Yeah, if you're paying attention to, if you yep. have a budget like that towards, like, don't waste your money and time on something like that. But, hey, if you've, if you've got disposable income and you want the competitive edge and you're checking all the other boxes, then why not? Yeah, and, you know? and, and to give you, like, a, an example, and then I want to go to STEM because I do think it's an interesting conversation because it's kind of, it's something that a lot of people now are promoting is this way to build muscle, and it's applied differently than the way I think we we saw it when we were trainers and coaches. But to give you an example, uh, if somebody came to me and said, hey, what's the mo- which form of cardio is the most effective for cap- you know for me? If I'm just going to give you the right answer, I'm going to say what I mean by right answer is what the studies will say. Yeah. I'm going to give you the one that burns the most calories. I'm going to say running. Oh, go running. Now, an experienced coach would say, which one do you like the most? Or because, what have you been doing? Right. Because I know the one you like the most is the one you're probably going to do. And what you've done in the past makes a difference in terms of what you should do now. That's just – and NCI does that really well. Now, Ben comes from the side where he wants the – what does the science say? Right. What it, right. So he brought up STEM. Okay. So we should talk about this. So STEM, as we knew it, was, was rehab equipment, right? You put yeah. it on a muscle. It makes the muscle tense. Which I still think is its best use. Yes, me too. It helps kind of reduce uh, atrophy. It doesn't prevent atrophy, but it reduces it. If you yeah. can't, if you're like immobilize, you can't move your leg because your leg's in a cast or whatever, get yeah. the quad flexing, all that stuff. Well, the way they're applying it now, I don't know if you guys have seen this machine. Facilitate recovery. Well, no. They Have you seen these machines where they put super powerful stem machines on a muscle and then they make you do an exercise i saw him okay so he must have asked you because he and of course he's tied to something yes. he's promoting it i saw him doing the exactly what you said he was hooked up to some crazy machine uh-huh. all all on it and wires all hanging on his body and he's doing the uh the, the assault uh, bike yes the assault yeah. bike like as like, as intense as he could i love yes. how he just found the assault bike too yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i was like dude you know it's been around for like a million yeah. years well i see so i see Another other people in the, like to use a million millions, years. <laughs> millions and millions <laughs> they found it in the cave yeah um, until we get to neanderthals later yeah they were, that's why they were so yeah. fit they the way some people are using it for muscle building is they're like let's say i'm doing squats they'll hook me up they'll hook my quads up to this machine mm-hmm. While I'm squatting, it fires an electrical signal at my quads and makes the exercise hyper, hyper intense. I saw a girl doing deadlifts with uh, yes. she, her coach had them all had her all hooked to that, and I thought it was the stupidest thing ever. Yes. So now here's what it does. It'll make you really sore. It dramatically increases the intensity, <laughs> increases so, muscle hey, damage. So will if I take a baseball bat and hit you with the side <laughs> yeah. while you fucking do deadlifts. <laughs> yeah, no, too. Yeah. No. It does kind of sound like that, you know. Yeah, it's like, it's like I'm gonna throw a mess ball at you while you're you're doing yeah. a squat. Let's make this ah. harder. Well, what I told him is I said, yeah, intensity is great. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's something you should manipulate, but it's not the only thing. And if you go balls in on intensity and avoid you know, practice and frequency and volume and yeah. technique, like it's not going to do very – so you can, there's a million ways to make an exercise way more intense. Does that mean it's going to be more effective? No, not at all. So that's, that was my – Now, by the way, he gets uh, – and I want to defend him right now on this. He gets like uh, discredited by some people. right? You, obviously, you get, Ben has his camp of people that love him and everything yeah. he says. Then, he, then there's other people that like put him in that woo-woo the category or, or, yeah, or he's yeah. a pseudoscience guy or whatever. But here's the thing. I personally don't know a person on this earth that I would rather – have testing all that stuff and giving me feedback. Of course. Like, I think he is, I think he's, he's got everything he controlled. He has incredible integrity. He's the best one for the job. I think sure. he has incredible integrity. He it, He's honest about it. He, he has all the other boxes checked. I That's mean, that I mean. guy lives a very, like a very controlled, healthy, consistent lifestyle. 
So if there was somebody who's going to add something and go, let me try this new thing, I want to hear his feedback. He is, de- and I do. Yes. I call it when I hear about stuff yeah. that I'm curious about. He's normally the guy I text because I want to know when he tried it. He'll give me his honest feedback of, oh yeah, it's kind of like this, or it's compared to that, or honestly, I did it for like six months, didn't really feel or notice anything. Like, and I know that dude's controlling all the no, other variables. You're right because let's say something adds a uh, consistent one percent improvement in performance, so that you can measure it, right? How would you know if you get an increase in 1% and it wasn't just that you got a little bit better sleep right. or your diet was a little bit better? Ben would know because everything's controlled. Right. Everything's so controlled that that 1%, he could say it was that weird thing. He's that the I best did. for that. He really yeah. is. And yeah. I, and you know he does get some flack for for being that guy. And I get it, right? Because it is. He, every week I turn something on on his pitch and he's got something up his ass in his nose or <laughs> yeah. in his ears injecting or fucking glowing. Yeah, yeah, or injecting. I mean, but I mean, that's the dude that I want to see do all that dude. because I don't want to see some, you know, bullshit influencer peddling that stuff who's, you know, fucking hopped up on steroids, doing all kinds of other crazy shit, yeah. inconsistent, drinking, not sleeping well, and then telling me, hey, try this East Tim out. It gave me so much more performance. Get the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah, I know. You know? Why, why, what is it with the, everything in the butt nowadays with, with health and fitness? Is that like the new... I mean, it's like whatever... We've is, explored everywhere else. Uh, so it's just a natural Somebody, I should... Uh, you know what? I should I should have... Yeah. I, I mean, there's the butthole sunning thing that, that kind of came well, about. Well, like, uh, it's like you have things that work, and they're like, how can we make this different? Like, oh, everybody loves coffee. Have you had it up your butt? Yeah, but up the butt. Yeah, that's yeah, way different. That's, I mean, it's powerful. Have you guys heard about these kids that what, what is, get drunk through their butthole? Have you heard of this? Yeah. Well, that yeah, was I'm on sure. uh, Jackass a long time ago. On the, they did that? Yeah, on the first or second one where they turned him upside down and they did the, the beer bong straight in his ass. You don't remember that? No. It was dangerous because it gets to your bloodstream Hella so fast. fast. So, okay, someone, I'm, I'm doing my questions today and mm-hmm. somebody asked me about this. I had no, I have not heard about it. Any thoughts on those semen retention videos I've seen on YouTube? Where are we going? <laughs> no, it's related. It's supposed to be related to health. Look it up, Doug. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. This is a serious one. Semen retention. Oh my god! Don't click on images. It's so straight to articles. Please. So it's there. Okay, I, th- I think I'm going to guess. I'm going to uh, guess it has to do with not ejaculating. That's what I'm going to guess. Just, with. Yeah, I'm assuming that so too. You basically, and I think they're trying to trying to claim it has all kinds of health benefits, and it's like a movement going on right now. Doesn't feel. Doesn't seem like it feels. Project always, Blue Balls. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I get asked some questions sometimes, and I'm like, "What? I have yeah. no idea what the <laughs> fuck that is." Hold on. Okay. Improves fertility, sexual pleasure, See? or physical health. The sperm retention helps direct sexual energies to other areas of life, or that it improves emotional health and spiritual. Okay, so I need to know what now, it is. Okay, so th- isn't this just a rebranded like Kama Sutra thing? Like you know how they have that like where you just hold on, like you're just about to go, and then you just stop. You but know, d- this is this called f- it's called edging. That's but what doesn't that's this? Uh, there's some is other. Is that what edging is considered? I, I think what it Pornhub is. Pornhub doesn't consider that edging. Does I think it? edging. <laughs> whoa. That's like, whoa, I mean, that's the only he, place I know of that's edging. A different no, genre, I think, Adam. I think <laughs> that's a whole category. I think what I mean, what I'm saying is, is, is I think what it is is you have sex or whatever. Yeah. Never allow yourself to orgasm, and so you constantly do that, yeah, and that's is, now. If I'm that, not wrong. Is this called tantric Thank sex? You, tan- tantric. That's what I was looking. It's been around forever. Yeah, that's been around forever. So what is it? Explain. It's just you don't ejaculate. That's all it is. That's it. It's just a rebrand of that. Trying to justify it, and doesn't that health, fly in like the? Angle. Doesn't it, doesn't that fly in the face or in direct conflict of? <laughs> doesn't of, fly in the face. Nothing yeah. flies out. <laughs> yes, by yes. No pun intended, right there. Yeah. No pun intended. A lot of it. No. No, we just had we just had a great interview with God Sod, right? And we an evolutionary behavioral psychologist, right? And doesn't that isn't that like in direct conflict of what the, the theory when we talked about open relationships with them? Like resisting and not ejaculating for all these people, wouldn't that cause more conflict as a society? So isn't it not a great idea? Well, I know mm. this. I know. No, that, yeah. I think? know medical studies show that uh, frequent ejaculation Discipline. reduces prostate cancer risk. That's a fact. So that'll mm-hmm. they'll actually show that. But this used to be an old myth in sports. I bet you heard this oh, back yeah. when we were in high school and stuff like uh-huh. that. Like guys that wouldn't like jerk off like the when, once football season from started. Football they'd be like, coaches or like from boxing. I mean, you hear a lot more in fighting. I think uh, because yeah, cause, they cause, want you like yeah, super makes you angry. Yeah. When, when I haven't had sex or haven't jerked off in like a week, I'm angry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then Mike Tyson just you know basically threw that out and was like, no, this you know I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I think that's what it is, and it's and that's what it says. Like it helps you with your sexual energy and your whatever yeah probably because you're super frustrated so you either 
ha- you have to figure it out. Anytime you're really frustrated, you got to figure it out, right? Emotionally and mentally. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's the maybe that's the thing. But that's weird, dude. That <laughs> I, yeah, I that's really weird. That. Dude, and what happens when you finally let let it go? Oh shit. I mean, yeah. So I got something else that I don't know if this is weird or what you're going to call this, but and I'm curious if you guys have seen this yet. So Katrina's uh, best friend texted her last night. Oh, my God. Look what my son's school is doing now. So now when you go get your kids uh, uh, school photos, you can upgrade and pay to doctor them. So you want to fix your kids' crooked ass teeth? Ten dollars. You, you want to get rid of that the the birth no the way. birth mark on their forehead? Seven dollars. Like they have they have they have, they now offer that as a like an all the Olin Mills face to bro. I cannot believe they're doing this. That's the children. Me- and you're talking about this kid's got to be. Uh, he's let's see here. He's probably eight or nine. Wow. You know? Well, think about the message that sent. Yes, what that's what I'm complex your kids. Well, remember when I brought up that app. app that I told I was so blown away that my nieces and and stuff were all into it when I I brought it up before and they're like, "Yeah, we use it too." And I found out like I think like 2 200 million or something crazy people have downloaded that which is like FaceTune or yeah. I don't know the name of it, but yeah. one, something like that where you can modify your face and whiten. And they, I mean, my, my nieces tried to like justify it as like, well, we just use it to whiten our teeth. That's all. You know, we wouldn't change oh my God, how dude. fat we are. Well, I can only imagine what they would have done to my fourth grade picture uh, where I got stung by a yellow jacket right under my eye. And then the next day, my eye was just like puffed out and I had a slit like this. You have to, that like, photo turn still? To the side. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, get, I'll, I'll give it to Andrew. Oh, please. So oh, please. Oh, but please yeah, it was, the most, it was the saddest picture. And I'm just sitting there. Was like, mm. Well, think think about the message it sends your kid. Imagine you have a kid, because when you're a kid, you're, you're insecure about something. So your kid's like, oh, I hate my big nose. I yeah. hate my big nose. And then they get their school photo and they're like, why did they change my this nose? This doesn't look like me. That will only reinforce this terrible insecurity. Well, even worse. Right. I mean, kids are so savvy now. They they're probably familiar with those apps, and they're probably all pro it and for it because you are insecurities start really early. Yeah, but it's different to change it yourself. Imagine if your parents yeah, did. So like, why did my mom and dad change? I mean, my face? what what if it's really not Dude. that? What if it's the kids that are asking the parents to do it, and the parents just concede and they do it? I mean, still bad. Yeah. No matter what the behavior that you're you're teaching the kid at that young of an age, that it's okay that you fix this and audit wow. audit the way you look on. So if you guys think so that crazy. if that's guys, fucking insane to it me, is. dude. If, if you guys think in the future that we're gonna wear contacts or glasses that are gonna augment reality, mm-hmm. I wonder if you're gonna be able to the do it to beer goggles. Where right? you're you're gonna be able to do it to where when other people look at you. It's gonna modify because you can have something where I mean, you know I, what I'm saying. This yeah, is yeah, why yeah. this is why I subscribe to the whole idea that we're gonna be huh. divided as a as a world where we'll be like plugged in or unplugged. And I think there's gonna be a big portion of people. I think there will be more people plugged in than unplugged. Oh yeah, it'll be like ninety and, and I, ten. And I think that you're. All of your inter- I, I think Player One hit it on the head. I think surrogates did a good job with those movies. That it's going to be this: you plug in, and people do not leave their house. Yeah, and and your their avatar and character is whatever they want it to be. We're already moving that direction. Well, they're already you, trying to make the world seem like it's the biggest, scariest thing on the, you know, to to stay out, to be outside is so scary. Oh, you know, I can, like, I can just imagine. God forbid. Exactly. Think about all the things that are just pointing in that direction. That oh man, wouldn't it just be better if we just stayed safer? We'd be away from this virus. We wouldn't. There would be no bullying. You could yeah. be whoever you want to be. You can be. Like, you saw an article we just saw uh, the Jerry sent about fruit fly, like uh, uh, was epidemic that real? or something. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it was real or not, but it was KTVU or whatever, which is like a legit like, news, yeah, San Jose. Yeah, news source. So it's like, what the fuck is a fruit fly going to do? Like, <laughs> like, why are we even worried about this? Well, I know that it it, it that could definitely destroy crops Yo, I, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah but like, why that. throw it out there like it's some kind of like, – like, well, they made it sound like it was like – this uh, murder hornet thing. Well, logically know? speaking, there you, there should be more fear around mosquitoes than there should be sharks, right? There's more. There's been more yeah. deaths. I'm more afraid of the the genetically modified um, mosquitoes. Uh, it's okay. So it That's says it of. says portion of South San Jose under state quarantine for Oriental fruit flies. Wait a minute, isn't that a politically incorrect? Yeah, I thought, Wait, we can't use that. I thought you said that term. Hello, my grandma used to use yeah. that. So yeah. every time residents word, in the I area like are urged to consume. To you. Okay, it says here. Residents in the area are urged to consume or process homegrown fruit and vegetables on site or take extra care in disposing them. So I think what happens is if these fruit flies get all over the place, then they'll start to really damage fruits and vegetables. So I think that that quarantine literally just means yeah. 
Okay, well, that's for the farmers. Yeah. Like, well, why the, <laughs> like, why the just, fuck are we concerned about that? It's like, I'm not quarantined for some hey, bullshit. Yeah, I don't lie. know, bro. Like, why you keep throwing that I have around? I like, water. Yeah. Hey, I don't know. You never I been to my- I keep quarantining for whatever the hell's coming around. You've you know? never been to my Sicilian dad's backyard. He's like a, he's like a, he's like a total, he's got a normal middle class backyard. So it's not like this huge, he doesn't have a half an acre or anything like that. Yeah. And he's like every square foot of this backyard is growing something. Yeah. So he's got, you know, well, and it's his baby. Work. So I'm sure he's concerned about oh, yeah. fruit flies. Oh, but, he's hilarious about yeah. it, dude. He goes uh, out there and just checks every, every time I go there, Hey, look at this, uh, you know, green bean or whatever. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, more crazy news along those lines. I think you brought this up, Justin, a while back. And I think it's just now being confirmed that, uh, the Probably X-Men right. are changing their name. Oh man. To be, to be more no, inclusive. Yeah. Men. Oh, you oh, can't say X men. people. Yeah. You can't say men. Okay, so I reject that. How yeah. dare you? I'm gonna go ahead and put it. Men's out there Warehouse is next. I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Like anything man related. Yes. No. Uh, well, well what's so, so unfortunate to me is that, like seeing. It's gonna be like ex people, and this is again like birthing people and like this whole thing. Like with, with mother baby unit, they're trying to change that to like uh, caretaker unit or some bullshit like that. So anyway, at, at a certain point, like this whole movement to change words and try to include like a fractional percentage of the population. Like the, where do we draw the line? Yeah, uh, and well, for me, I say, no, I reject it. Yeah. I, what are they going to, okay. But what are they calling? Well, the truth is you, what do they call men now though? Men are what? Uh, people who ejaculate. There's people who oh, menstruate. Right, right, right. People. What does it call men? Do you guys know? Cause mm. I don't know. Um, I don't even know we're allowed to say men anymore. Yeah. Semen spreaders. <laughs> yes. uh, I yeah. try not to say it very often. So what are they going to change the name Engorged to? clitoris Ex people? people? I don't know, dude. I don't fucking know. I don't know, man. They just make stuff up, dude. And I, I don't know where to See, go. Marvel well, probably may rename the X-Men to well, be I mean, more they're, gender They're neutral. solving problems, Justin. I think if they do this... <laughs> Yeah. They'll solve everything. Well, yeah, they're definitely solving a tiny little problem that creates a, a huge I'm problem. really excited for the the, the, the God Sod interview to drop because we talk about a lot of this stuff. And yeah. He yeah. does such a good job of communicating uh, all that stuff. Yeah. It's, 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 it, that was an amazing conversation. Yeah. So I, I, I read a, a really cool, fascinating science article uh, the other day about this woman who she suffered from severe depression. They They tested a brain implant on her. And it cured her. Not only did it cure her, she felt overwhelming happiness and joy from having a particular part of her brain get stimulated by a brain implant. I feel like this, wait, is, this wait, has got a punchline. What do you mean by there is no punchline? What uh, do you mean no. by stimulated? Like, yeah. does it actually like shock or like like you feel like an electrical like charge? I or think pulse? it's. I think it sends in some so a pulse. But so it says. This is her quote. She felt the most intensely joyous <laughs> sensation. So it's a neural electrode, what? and it returned her to a life worth living. So it's an experimental neural implant which delivers 300 zaps per day and it represents a bold new frontier in the treatment of extreme psychiatric conditions. Wow. How like so think about this for a second. Like you, the repercussions well, I mean of, the brain is I mean it's it, it comprises of all those like electrical impulses like all the time so they're just I guess hacking their way through that well, now. Well, I mean if you can if you can just put like cuz okay, you have extreme psychiatric conditions, I get that. But the average person feels sad, right? The average person feels depressed. We don't like those feelings, unmotivated. Mm -hmm. At what point do you guys think it'll be people just using it, be like, you know, I just want to be motivated all the time. And it's <laughs> <Yeah>. just <laughs> constantly making you feel a particular way. Like that's, there's a lot of lessons to learn from bad feelings. You don't think that would be For sure. something we get down regulated and then it would, you'd have to do more anyway. I don't know it, because mm -hmm. this is directly to the brain. So it's not through a receptor like yeah, but uh, you got to think drug. that the, the way the body adapts everywhere else, you would think that maybe would, that part of the brain shrinks. I don't know, or something or, like that. Yeah, or just adapts to it. Or no. I don't know, dude. It just seems like another way to escape or, or like not confront something that's you know it needs to be addressed. And, yeah. and I think that's where like I see the the promise in like psilocybin or something that actually kind of takes you Processes. some of these traumas. Yeah. And, yeah, it helps you to really process it in a, in a better way yeah why, that's a big difference right? why do they yeah. not use uh opiates for depression do you know oh, like it pairs with the the uh opiate receptors right so the you you would people think, and those are the feel good feel good high abuse potential well no of course that's yeah but why. so so are uh you know sris or whatever no. they're called too right no, no they're no, not no. highly addicted no people don't take ssris Addictive? like they would opiate it's not like you could take more and more and get this like automatic good feeling oh really yeah so oh, okay. it works very it works differently whereas an opiate you take it once oh my god i feel good let me take more oh my god i feel good and then you keep you know kind of pushing it yeah and it's got very high addictive 
potential. So do you think that's the reason why they don't oh, use yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Same reason why they wouldn't use alcohol or any other substance in that way. Because alcohol could do you know something similar, right? It makes you feel good uh, when you're depressed or whatever, short term. Mm. But it's the abuse potential. This is what like this is like the the delicate dance they do with with medications is abuse potential help. How much does it actually help? What's it actually solving? Um, you know, let's let's take it from there. Mm. So yeah. I don't know. Very lot, strange. <coughs> a lot of good feedback from that episode that we did. The Under one we did for anxiety. bodybuilding.com. Yep. Mm. Yeah, I thought that was that was really cool. Really, uh, you know, um, surprised by the the lack of any sort of response that we felt from their end on with bodybuilding.com. Yeah, they, it's was, pretty it's pretty wild. Like, uh, and maybe you could find this, Doug. I remember we pulled it up. Um, they were one of the most visited sites on the internet. Yeah, yeah and, and the, the a very they, popular. They, name. they fell off the cliff like about I don't know. Was just seven years ago? Six, yeah, seven years it was ago. probably from Amazon selling supplements. And just yeah, no, of them. course, right? I, w I would think that. But, you know, they look like they have this massive presence because you, I mean, this is so interesting about social media. Like, you see a company like that, they, they've got a pretty well name, right? Most people are familiar with bodybuilding.com yep, in our space. Yep. Two, two, over two million followers. Like, 2.7 on Instagram. Yeah. They, they did a post of ours. I think I added two people. It's under a thousand likes. Yeah, a bunch of robots. So yeah. that was cool. Well, I think that's maybe kind of what it is. Or pe maybe people follow them because of a promotion. It's yeah, like but even then, don't you think that it would still get, I mean, two million? You mm -hmm. know, even if like 95% of them followed for a promotion, like you're saying, or just, or even say they're all bot 95 well, are bots, it's still a lot of people should have seen those clips and you would think that you would it's see not just it's that interesting to think either. about though because even a massive massive show like a joe rogan show like some guests that go on there like they get very little impact uh from it which which they're always like confused by but some get huge well, impact well justin if you go through the instagram every post is it doesn't match the amount of followers oh, I, yeah i see what you're saying yeah because yeah. i thought that too maybe yeah. it was just us but i looked and it was <laughs> maybe we just sucked it, maybe, you know maybe we just thought we're okay we're not. that web remember that that sh that documentary we saw on social media where so like they said a large percentage of followers are fake and Instagram, it's in their best interest to not police that because th it looks good for them right. to have people to have yeah, more you followers. Want, you want big numbers for your shareholders, right? And they were saying something like most influencers, like fifty percent or more of their following, is not real, mm -hmm. wow. um, and it's just not. It's just totally fake. Interesting. So, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure that's why you have more than me. Is most of yours are fake? Yeah, I mean, the bots like me the yeah, most. I mean, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Fuck off. Hey, <laughs> you want to hear some bad news? No. So, oh, come on. Hey, take no, us down. Hey, yeah. so, do that. So, oh, so high. I think it was last year, uh, maybe 2020. I got to look this up. Um, there was a 30% increase in homicides. 30%? Yeah, in the like, in, in the country. Oh, overall in the, in the U.S.? Yeah, it says U.S. homicides rose 30% in 2020, the largest single year increase ever recorded now that is super Crime alarming is considering that we were in quarantine for a, a good amount of that time too well okay I, this is my I, I'm not my guess but i think it's 100 percent right you guys remember 2020 the police were taking a beating by mm, media yep. a beating yep uh, they were terrible they're all guaranteed people take advantage of that opportunity all systemically too. racist uh a defund the police actually became a political slogan for a little while although it's not so much anymore because they realized it was a bad thing and and <laughs> you think yeah, yeah. and it's, it's so funny to be people mm, trying to justify that as a yeah. good idea you want to hear what's sad about this 30 <laughs> percent like, increase here's uh, what's sad because bring chaos up a lot of the message was systemic racism defund the police it's better for minorities what how, how many of this 30 percent increase in in homicide Sides, do you think was disproportionately ninety uh, with minorities? Ninety percent, a, a huge percentage. I, I don't know what the percentage is. Disproportionate. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. That's so. That's very sad. I'm, I'm sure yeah, they stopped sucks. going in high crime areas, you know, because they were being told they're defund them in those areas. So they stopped going there. Yeah. And then what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, it's yeah. really sad. I was. It's huge. You know, Gang bangers and drug dealers and people that are in that that type of a business go awesome. You know, no cops are going to be coming around now. So you know, it's funny when they do polls. When they would do polls and they would go to these neighborhoods and poll minorities. Minorities were like, what do you mean defund the police? Terrible idea. Mm -hmm. They were not in support of that whole slogan. Oh, yeah. So it just goes to show you how you're running a business, you know, and, and just, yeah, yeah, you want protection running your business you, just to, to get by. You need that. If you look at statistics, the single, if you if there's one factor that you could, that you could change, statistic that you could change that would have the greatest impact in crime in a positive way, 
it's increasing police. That's the one thing. It, there's no single thing that competes or compares to that. Now, there's lots of things you can do in combination, but simply increasing police presence has the largest impact on reduction of crime than any other single factor. And I don't know why people, you know, completely ignore that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which is, you know, well, I'm going to counter your shitty news and bring up some good news. Thank great you. news. Yes, let's get out of this. Okay. <laughs> October 14th, uh, rad is coming back to theaters. Oh my God. <laughs> Booyah! 30. This year is their 35th anniversary. So 35th anniversary. They are coming back to the big screen. If you haven't seen rad, it is better than Warriors. You're not missing out. I'm gonna say. <laughs> it is better than Warriors. I kind of feel right it's now. not better than the Warriors. It is better Stop. than the Warriors. Okay. okay. We'll I've never seen Warriors. There, I can't but, say uh, Hey, but, how many, let me ask you this. How many hip-hop songs, video games, and pop culture quotes I mean, refer to rap? Games and, Zero. And, is there a lot that Come do on, that there's a work? music video. Send me an angel. Shh, do, 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 sh. Yeah. And that's true. Right that's now. one thing. It's a yeah. good thing. That's one thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, come on, bro. The Warriors are all you over. You had the girl from Full House in it? No, I've been getting on. people. I've been getting the DMs. You were look, You were so excited and looking it. forward to people. I knew it. Have you watched well, Warriors yet? Here's what. Here's where I'm going to counter it because- uh, because of 2020, everything else, right? Bike sales went through the roof. Mm. And so there became this big, huge movement to get back to like BMXing and, and like these dirt tracks and stuff. Like I see just mobs, especially in Santa Cruz too. There's like meetings of all these people and they're, they're doing wheelies and they're doing all the, the tricks and things like you used to see freestyle BMXing. Like it became a whole thing all over again. I think BMX bikes, especially for grown men, is the biggest yeah. waste of money. Because here's what happens. SE bikes, reach out you to get, me. I want a bike. No, you get excited because uh -huh. you're, you're, you're 40. coming after you right I here. don't care. You get excited because you're 40 or whatever and you were like, oh, I remember that. I'm going to buy one and then you use it four <laughs> times and you never use again. You bought one. How often do you I ride did, it? I don't. Well, <laughs> I, I bought you. the wrong one, dude. It, it doesn't fit. It doesn't work for me. So it just sits I need, I need one that actually fits me. Our buddy Lawrence is riding his all the time. He I keeps see asking me about it too. And I'm yeah. like, bro, I I didn't get it. I need a new bike. He went out, he one. went out and got one and got one to be match his 49er col colors and stuff because he's a big fan. And I see him riding all the time. He'd be hitting Justin bikes Hype for, all the time. Like, no, yeah, for yeah, adults you out there. Bike. You know, like, dude, you guys but dude, they're like so exclusive. Like right when one bro, comes up, like it's gone. It's not that. Everything is like that. I was, before yeah. you guys came in the studio, yeah. Doug and I were talking about like he's been looking. I think I got Doug going down the rabbit hole last night. When I, did you see the car I sent? That that's Justin's oh car. Oh my god. What yeah. is that? Dude, that thing like a monster like a, truck. Yeah. So the audience uh, knows tank. I have I have set personal goals for everybody and when we hit this crazy like milestone that I want everybody to go out and just do He's, something irresponsible and ridiculous and buy like a like just I mean, a car that, that you would do Adam, right but so, also, you know, yeah, we got to keep him. This is what Adam does. He distance. wants to do it so bad. <laughs> yeah. But he's like I'll feel better if they do it. Yeah, I need them to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's just, true. Justify. It's true. I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to deny that at all. What, but I sent Justin's over. It's the it's called the Apocalypse. It's so sick, dude. Yeah, it's yeah. Bad. It's like bulletproof, and uh, it's all like huge. They extended it, so it was like- Yeah, it's a it, modified Jeep. Um, oh, what would they call that? The yeah, Jeep. what do they call those I don't Jeeps? know what, 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 it, what so it was. I went down it wasn't a popular one that I know of. Like I went down the rabbit hole with that. So you sent that, and then I go on YouTube, and there's videos of people who have souped up like huge trucks that are like 15, 1600 horsepower diesel trucks yeah. that are- Blowing past Lamborghinis on the freeway. Have you seen these videos? Past yeah, Lamborghinis. Yeah. There's one guy who literally races a Viper GT, whatever. One of the fa like a, a super like ridiculously fast car. Yeah. And dusts him and puts. Of course, it's black smoke because it's diesel. Yeah. Just covers the car in black. Better hope there's a lot of straightaway. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. It was on the freeway and he totally just screwed. It. If All right. What's the turn. what's the most likely way that each one of us would be completely irresponsible and ridiculous with money? Okay. Like if you were all just to do, spend a bunch of money and just be stupid about it, what are, I think a, a car for me. For, for you, a car. Yeah, for me, it would be so. Or it would be expensive a, jewelry or something yeah. like that. No, no. Well, I mean, if you count like the watch. Rolex thing, like yeah. that's, I have one more and that's it and then I'm done, right? So I'm, I'm, a long time ago, I made a goal for myself and, and so I hope I have that, but yeah. I don't think I would do that other than that. Uh, cause I'm not like a, gold chain diamond guy and all that stuff like that. <laughs> like the role for the people that uh, have You're listened to the show long enough, guy, they know, like, yeah. cause I think I've talked about on the show before a long time ago, but those are, those have, those were very important to me. Right. So they all, they have lots of meaning. The very first one has a lot to do with 24 hour fitness yeah. days. I've shared that with you guys before that, that was supposed to be, it was given out to the number one uh, guys in the company 
And I was on pace to crush that six months in. <laughs> they took it away. And it was right after the dot com bubble burst and like every all the companies were taking a shit yeah. and they all of a sudden just eliminate that competition. After I like committed my and by the way, like to do to win that was just I mean you're it's a big deal. Yeah, a handful of people win that, right? And so I'm competing against, you know, thousands of people and and there's always a couple people that are like killing it. Yeah. And it took literally me not taking days off. I mean, I for six months I almost maybe took off five days, I would say, maybe less. And just was grinding to get there and was on pace to win. And they all of a sudden send this email out that says like, sorry, can't win the Rolex wash this year. I was devastated over that. And then after that, I made a commitment that I'm going to get one, but I wasn't going to just go get one. I wasn't going to go. I needed to, just like I was, had you a competition. It somehow. Yeah. So I had, I set a financial goal for myself that, you know, once I had X amount of dollars saved up in my account, it was a big goal for me, something that was way far from where I had was currently at. And that was, so I got that. So that was a really big moment for me. Yeah. And then the three after that were all other milestones. And then there's one last one that I set that goal a long time mm -hmm. ago. And then I'm pretty much done. So they, they have the time. I know yeah. that, right? Yes. <laughs> they have, and they hold value, bro. Well. I just, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've been trying to convince Doug for a long time. I know I, Doug's in the market of getting one right now. And I'm like, dude, the watch that Doug is about to get, 15 years ago when I first was shopping for them that thing was uh 30% less. He could he could I could have bought that thing back then. Uh, what crazy? Let me think. What investments would have grown more than 30% over the last 15 years? A lot. So I don't know if you should sell it like an well, investment. I don't know about that. You know, but they do look you know what they are yeah, nice and that's, if you value that's them. That's and you can wear it, you know. know. It's I'm a, always the shitty shit talker on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I don't Sorry. mean to shit on your dreams. There's not a lot of cool things that you can you can buy and use. Uh, a house is one of those, right? Yeah. So a house you could buy and use and then it still go up in value after a decade or whatever like that. Um classic cars are that way. I feel um, like Justin would get a classic car. Yeah. I think that would be the biggest thing. Yeah. It's something sure. he would want to he would have to work Definitely, on. Definitely, yeah. It's old classic that, that was like totally done like stem to stern like crazy yeah. now you to know, me that's you not, see chip foose you know promoting it or something to me that's not irresponsible because a, a, a really really nice rare classic car like that on average and maybe this has changed because i looked this up years ago doug uh the average classic like classic car appreciates by eight percent a year so, because every time one fall, one ever crash gets another crash, the value in those just keep going. I would time imagine well. that they would go up even. I don't know how they're going to change the laws, but I know that w the way that a lot of states are moving is they're going to start banning gas cars in the next twenty years completely. So I wonder if that'll increase the value. I'm sure so it will. this is part of because I, I think a car in general is one of the worst investments you could ever do. Generally speaking, yeah, generally always. speaking, yeah, you lose value immediately. Right. So if I were to be the only thing worse is a boat. When you right. said irresponsible, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. Dude, no, that is, is that is the only thing that is worse. Actually, yeah. a boat is worse. Um, so if you said doing something irresponsible, I don't think of the the Rolex as that. I don't think of a classic car as that. I do think of a you know, Mercedes S65 as that, you know, mm -hmm. because as soon as I drive it off the lot, it's not worthy. But I, I am intrigued by this. And I, you, I've talked to you guys about, I think I shared a video with you guys. The Cadillac CT5 V series is going to be the last uh, gas powered manual ever built by GM. Oh, and it's, it's and it's the fastest sedan in the market in its class. So you're talking about a 660 horsepower luxury sedan. I'm surprised it's manual. It's I nobody know. makes manuals. No anymore. one does, and it's going to be the oh, last one. That gets me sick, excited. The dude. last one that GM will make. So imagine if 10 years or 15 years down the road, whatever you think this future is coming, when we're never our kids, kids will never drive cars or whatever. Yeah. I I imagine that is the last manual ever made with that much horsepower and stuff like that. Hey, it'll, it's, it'll, okay. it'll probably look so complicated yeah. to our grandkids. We're going to be like, wait a minute, oh, yeah. there's three pedals. All, there's this thing you got to put in all well, these Well, it's the number one deterrent from car theft. I better know. than an alarm, better you, than a low dude, bar I, thing or whatever. I totally have one for Sal, though. I was like thinking about yeah, this. Yeah, what the like, hell would I do? Well, I'm, because I'm like, so it's like something super expensive and ridiculous that I think he would just love would be like like an Elon Musk uh, flamethrower, like signed by him or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I like I, I was that. like, if I had money, I would buy that for Sal. I, he would pay big money for like a ridiculous ex experience. Yeah. yeah like probably. I could see Sal doing like, and this or, is like, cool. Cool. This is on my Monk list. debate somewhere across the world between Jordan Peterson and, and Sam Harris. Or like, this is a, here's what you would do. Or, an ex, or like an exotic supplement that doesn't exist. Yeah, you buy a supplement like company, let's be honest. You know, like this is, you know, black yeah. rhino or you know, rhinoceros <laughs> penis. You would go you know, to you would go to some like tea. 
yeah. Italian, uh, like, like somewhere in Italy, a f- you know five star Michelin restaurant and some famous chef that's there. That would be cool. And have him serve you in the in like the yeah, private that would, dinners that you get. You that know that people cool. can you know, that are super high ticket to do. I could see you do something yeah, like that. Be, I mean, that's a cool yeah. experience. And, Honestly, if I think about it, I think the biggest waste of my, whatever, you, however we want to label this, would be I'd probably buy a gym. Honestly, it, just for fun, I'd buy a big ass gym. <laughs> By work and just just for fun and <laughs> and just do it and just lose money on it and not yeah. care. I mean, honestly, that's something that it's kind of like a dream of mine <laughs> yeah. to buy a gym and not worry about profiting. Well, I just think for fun. If you have, if you guys haven't seen uh, Juji Mufu's, uh, oh yeah, home sick. gym, that is sick. sick. Yeah, he really did. I, I mean, I think he's got like a half a million to do it. I think he did. I think I, he said the price when, excuse me, when he was first doing it, and I think it was like. Yeah, it was like every piece in there was custom. Oh, it's beautiful. You know, equipment wise, like he put so much thought into it. And that. it's on his property. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, I could totally see it. I mean, yeah, I, I yeah. can get down with that. Yeah, you totally see I could get down with that as far as like a way to yeah. just kind of blow money. Dude, I got to, I'm finally calming down from earlier. You, you know what I took? First mm. off, I was a little upset earlier. So I want to apologize to you guys because there's a little drama going on in the, you know, when you have, uh, you talk about something on the podcast and then you have oh, family members. Shit. That what did you do? Effect. What did you say? I don't want to get into too much detail. Oh, come on. Things. You can't no. do that. You can't like, uh, you know what it is? Halfway <laughs> tell us. You know what it is? What? Have you guys, I'm sure you guys have experienced this. Of the, course. The worst fans are always. People related to you. That you know. Close to you. Yes. Yeah, totally. And because that what they'll do is you know, we tell stories all the time. Yeah. Either and when I talk about my family, ninety nine percent of the time it's positive, one percent of the time it's a funny story. I don't talk shit about the people that I, I really care about. But there's always that person that listens that's like, ooh, I'm I can stir shit up by showing this person what they said and do it. So anyway, that started. Got me super irritated, I was super mad. So I took the you know the samples of Ned. What was it, was it called? Is it Calm Dog? What is it that 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 mellow? Oh, the new, Me, no, not no, no, mellow. No, 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 the new the new little ones oh. they gave us in the bottle. For, is that re, by the way? Before you talk about, it, is that even released? Yeah, yet? is that released yet? Uh, yeah, we're supposed to talk about it actually. Okay, <laughs> de-stress <laughs> blend. De-stress. Well done, sir. Well, bro, that works. So it, it's 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 one to one ratio. It has a cinnamon taste to it. I did it the other day. Yes. So it's got so it's uh it's got CBD and CBG. So it's a one to one ratio. Was CBG the one that you were talking about a, a while back? Is your your prediction of that being one of the other? I believe so. Cannabinoids it's, or whatever. They consider that's it. It's called the parent cannabinoid because without it, you wouldn't have THC, CBD, and any of the other. Or was it CBN? You CBN about- is another one that yeah. makes you sleepy. But CBG is anti-anxiety, anti-depression. Uh, really, really interesting studies around it. They also put ashwagandha in this, and man, I can feel it. It really works. Do you predict that we're we're going to start to extract those out and then uh, concentrate them even more, and they're going to become in the, the eventually f- big pharma is going to get their hand on this, right? Yeah, I think we, that's the inevitable. They're not going to use cannabinoids though. They'll use cannabinoids that are ch- that are changed a little bit, so I think can be sold as pharmaceuticals. That's what I think. Mm. Because because otherwise. The artificial version of them. Yeah, like they're going to take CBD and tweak it and call it something else so that it's patented. Uh, uh, but otherwise, combine it with something. Yeah, because if you take sense. if you take cannabinoids by themselves, they do something, but they work much better in the presence of other cannabinoids. That's why the that's why Ned's Full products. Spectrum. Yeah, it's got all it's got lots of other cannabinoids in there. They work together, so it's not like one plus one equals two. It's like it's one funny, plus one the equals way four. It was found in nature is best for our body. Isn't that weird? I know, I know, especially for chronic kind of the case feeling yeah. kind of stuff. Right? Isn't it like always like that though? It's like naturally balanced, you know, and already. It definitely is. I mean, think about think about like taking protein powder versus eating the food and mm. what you miss from eating the food, right? Or a vitamin minus like vitamin C. Oftentimes, it's present with bioflavonoids and other cofactors in fruit versus just taking it by itself. Mm-hmm. So definitely, but I think there's also value in concentrating things if you want like acute effects. Have yeah. you know? You guys just made me think of something. You know, a lot of people have been uh, uh, our other sponsor, which was the which is the what's the um, gel packet ones that uh, that taste like farts. What's the uh, <laughs> Live On Labs glutathione? Yeah, the Live On. I, I know this is not a commercial for them. Sorry. So I, but I, you just made me think <laughs> it tastes of like farts. Uh, it's you, so true. Well, they uh, so I guess you, farts. they actually they promote you do it like in like a little shot glass or with water or something. Yeah. So you're not supposed to actually the way we do it straight. Well, not not supposed to, but it's they. Uh, 
promote it being mixed with a drink and then you take it down. I just do it straight. Well, I haven't Probably done that yet, and I feel like I should. The intensity of it a little bit, but yeah. I wonder. Have you tried it that way? way? I haven't tried it that no. way. No. Uh, okay, so the next but commercial that we do me. for I them officially, what? I'll I'll report yeah, back I don't and try have one. Problems. If, if I know it works, it's just like it's oh, it's, it's in the gullet. Yeah, it's tough for me. Yeah, that's a little. Yeah, you know me. I want. Hey, to, hey look, I, I want mint you, chocolate chip flavor. Hey, or something, it, you know it works though. <laughs> well, you know. it works. Glutathione does not get absorbed well unless it's you know put in a way that it makes it absorbable, and they did that. So yeah, yeah. don't waste your money on yeah, no. glutathione that your body can't absorb. Hey, real quick before we get to the rest of the show, head over to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump for some of the best natural paleo inspired supplements you'll find anywhere. Now, my favorites are their bone broth protein, the most unprocessed protein powder I've ever seen in my entire life. There's literally nothing in there but bone broth. You can also try their meat sticks. It's grass-fed beef, great macronutrient profile. It's not dry like beef jerky. It tastes really good. It's an incredible snack, but they have many, many other products that most of you will benefit from. So go check them out. Head over to paleovalley.com forward slash mind pump and then use the code Mind Pump 15. That's Mind Pump 15 for 15% off your first order. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from Catherine Health Journey. What is the best way to progress to a full unassisted pistol sw squat? Well, okay. Assuming you can already do, Ooh. you know, two-legged squats with good form and you're strong and you could do barbell squats. The next, in my opinion, best way to do this, two exercises I really like. One is a one-legged get up off of a bench. So you sit on a bench, you have your legs bent, maybe one leg is straight, mm -hmm. and you use one leg to predominantly lift yourself up to kind of practice that single leg lift up. And then the second one is just stand on a box and with one leg off the box and squat down slowly and come back up and, and progress yourself to be getting lower and lower. There's two things that uh, I love to use. And it, it depends on if you have a steep enough incline of stairs, but... You know, it, it actually like acts as a natural kind of progression uh, to be able to get up off the stairs. So if you sit like a bit higher, oh yeah, and you lift you lift your leg up, and you can start a bit higher. You start there. Now gradually, like go to the next step, sit on that step, come back up, and kind of work your way down the stairs. Or you know, the the, the more obvious one, if you have um, suspension trainer straps, is to kind of hold on. And to gradually, um, sort of basically like training wheels. So you're you're lifting your leg up, you're squatting down to the depth that you you know can control comfortably, and, and drive back up, and, and sort of gradually get rid of um, you know the suspension trainer to to help to pull you back up. Yeah, uh, I love the suspension trainer, or what you said. Um, yeah. The only thing that I would I would say that when you're doing this is. When people are trying to learn how to do a, a pistol squat, they, they get so hung up on being able to say, I did a pistol squat versus like really paying attention to the, the form, the mechanics. Right. Um, it becomes a one-legged anyhow squat. Yeah, yeah. And they kind of, you know. They kind of roll forward and that, into it. Yeah, yeah, that kind of defeats the purpose. I would rather see this. So if we were going to do the the one-legged get up, like you said, I would take clients and I would put like, remember those those blue blue foam pads, yeah. right? Yeah, and you make the bench higher. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'd start, I'd, I'd have I'd have a bench and then I'd stack one or two or however many I think to, I'd because I could do, I did this with clients that were 80 years old. So I would do it with anybody, even in advanced age, this is a great exercise. And you just, by regressing it, or, or you add pads to regress the exercise. So I'd start really high and I would emphasize the, the the form, right? And sometimes I would I would let clients like even hold on to my fingers, right? And say, you know, you can hold on here. I want you to keep the chest up, slowly come down. I don't want you leaning mm -hmm. forward to get up. And I want to see like this perfect one-legged squat, even if it's a very short range of motion. And then mm -hmm. I get rid of one pad. And then we work on that till we get perfect form. And then we get rid of that pad and then you're down. And you work your way down that way until you get to like a pistol squat. If you have a suspension trainer, you can start all the way at the bottom and then you actually have some arms. The only thing that I say to caution you is that, you know, don't try and do a pistol squat and completely throw out the mechanics of it just so you can get a pistol squat out because right. then you lose a lot of the really good benefits of getting uh, doing a, a single legged squat. Yeah, I well, agree. I also wanted to highlight one thing too that, like, uh, in terms of like ankle stability and mobility. Um, to address, uh, making sure like, and so this is the whole knees over toe kind of a, a mentality where, you know, you are going to be in a position where your knee's going to travel 
quite significantly further in order to counterbalance Great point. Uh, you into that position. A lot of people can't handle that kind of stress around the knee initially. So to be able to work on that and focus on like a combat stretch and really kind of gradually increase that range so your knee travels a bit further forward and be able to have that comfortable feel be able to keep your heel down and and tracking uh to keep you stable is going to be a vital part. that's the number one reason why people have trouble with a pistol squat i'd say besides strength uh it's it's ankle mobility 100 yeah. percent. it's because you're you're there's a lot more angle flat uh, excuse me ankle flexion with a pistol squat than a traditional squat, your knee is going to travel much further forward, and that's why that's why a pistol squat for me is almost impossible. I have such bad, such tight ankles in that particular position that, and I'm strong enough, I could definitely lift my body weight with one leg. It's my ankle that gets in the way, and that's most people. Yeah, with yeah, most people, do, they can't do. I, it I couldn't do it until just recently, until I actually addressed which that wasn't the goal. The goal was related to a bilateral squat, right? I wanted to get into a yeah. deep squat and work on my squat and scroll position right so but i couldn't do a pistol into that once i could actually once i had the ankle mobility the pistol squat was actually really easy yeah because like you i had the leg strength you know i had the leg strength to be able to do one-legged squats but i didn't have the ankle mobility to be able to do it so mm -hmm. that's probably i mean depending on who's asking this question but i'd say most a people, big limiting factor yeah. yes most yeah people that's the issue yeah the and, issue. and by the way again back to my point of like the mechanics matter if you do a pistol squat and your heel comes up off the ground, like you're you're doing it wrong. Like right. you do not want to you do not want the heel to rise. And if it is rising, then that's your issue is ankle mobility. Address that first. Really get good at that, and then start with the regressions that we're talking about and yeah. work your way to it. Next question is from CMOS twenty three. What is harder to develop, quads when you're glute dominant or glutes when you're quad dominant? Uh, that's funny. That's you, yeah. you know what's funny about this? Uh, immediate, my immediate like reaction is to say glutes only because it's, nine it's out of ten times common. that's yeah. the issue. Yeah. It's almost never that someone's glute dominant and their quads don't want to react. But I will say this. They're probably equally as hard. I don't, I don't care who you talk to. Yeah. When you're doing a compound lift and you're there's a particular muscle group that just isn't doing a lot of the work and other, other muscle groups are doing most of the work, it's really hard to come out of. It just is. It's a very challenging thing. So it could be, I think both are really hard. Now, the way that you solve both issues is by hitting that particular muscle first or priming it properly, which will help you change the technique and form to activate those muscles more. I know, you know, it's funny. Doug is a, isn't Doug a glute dominant he's, guy? He's one of the only people I've ever known that is like that. With, You're a with big squat. booty guy, right? You have, yeah. you have more, more powerful glute. glutes over here. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually think uh, that's easier only for the, the reason I think it's easier. There's a, I, or, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but like in my head right now, I'm going, okay, I, I can think of a lot more good strength building exercises for the quads than for the glutes. The glutes are really tough to have like really, there's hip thrust and a lot of the exercises that you would do primarily for the glutes, you're going to, you're going to fill it in your, in your quads if you're quad dominant. So it's, you could always like glute, like, uh, excuse me, uh, quad isolation exercises, I guess are pretty easy. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's oh, really right. leg extensions, leg well, presses. Well, let's talk about Doug for a second. So Doug's glute dominant. And so what's he, what's he doing? He's doing heel ed elevated versions of squats. So goblet squats, goblet squats, front mm -hmm. squats, things that keep them real upright, get them no more knee extensions, Sissy squats. Sissy I showed squat. him. I showed him a version of a sissy squat the other day with a cable. Mm. Uh, that will sub, at some point we're going to air as a Friday Fit tip, which is really good. But I mean, honestly, if there's a muscle group that you have that you're having trouble connecting to, hit that first with some isolation exercises. Then go to the compound lift. Now that doesn't automatically increase the activation because I know there's some keyboard warriors and scientists that are watching this going, "Well, studies show that pre-exhausting <laughs> doesn't blah blah blah." Okay, it's not because by itself it's increasing activity. What it's doing is it's allowing you to feel that muscle more so you can change your form with the compound lift. If I pre-exhaust my chest and then I go bench press, now it's easy, if, if, and if that's an area that's hard for me to connect to, now I can move my elbows and position the bar in a way to where, oh, there's the chest. I can really feel it now in the lift. So it helps you with the compound lift. That's really the main benefit, but it's, there's nothing inherent about it 
that increases uh, activation. Can we make a commitment, the three of us, that when when people, when you know the academia, uh, academics get on our page and and love to do that stuff, that instead of us going back and forth and even wasting our time, we just put like I, I know, know things. things. Yeah. <laughs> yes, hundred percent, it's perfect. For you all right, I would let's, like, let's I would all, like for our fans because well, no, our fans will know that right, oh, okay. so they'll yeah. understand it. They they'll just get frustrated, like what's that supposed to mean, right? Because yeah. because it's always it's never putting it quotations though. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah no, of course yeah. you quote it and say I know things. Things, and then we'll just leave it at that because it's. I'm not going to waste my time going back and forth explaining this because it is. It's always somebody who like, well, the science says yeah. this. I don't give a shit. That's what it says. Yeah, I'm telling like, you from training tons in a of very people. Very controlled you, setting with you know a very limited population. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. Prove well, this. That's yeah. fine. I was just. You know, what made me think of that was one. We just brought up that story of you talking about I know things. And I was recently, I let myself get sucked in with somebody on YouTube of going back and trying to explain. I'm like, why am I doing this? This person is some troll who probably has never even listened to our show. Yeah. They they heard they this pulled one up some website. Yeah, they heard this like one clip and, and they want to try and debate back yeah. and forth with me. And it's like you're not even the person I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help everybody else that is actually looking to learn and and, and take some advice, not someone who wants to argue with me on the science. Our next question is from Logan Thomas. What is more important, spiking insulin before the gym or after the workout? I've heard both have value, one for energy and one for recovery. I don't know enough about it and want to know if it's healthy. Okay, so here's what's more important. Focus on your workout programming. Mm. Focus on general nutrition and yeah. sleep. And this right here is a great example of where, especially the supplement industry will put Point out- like zero zero one percent effective. These small things, or we're talking about the super advanced, what like earlier in the episode, we were talking about Ben Greenfield, where that extra 1% might make a difference. This is one of those things like spiking your natural insulin uh, before or after. What kind of a difference is it going to make? It's not going to make. It's going to make a difference that you won't notice ever. So it really doesn't matter. Here's what I like this. This is what's more important. Which one do you feel better doing? So I'll use myself as an example. Spiking insulin before would require that I eat something that causes an insulin response, either fast digesting proteins or usually carbohydrates. Right. I never eat before my workout. Why? Is it because I don't want my insulin to spike? No, because I feel better fasted when I work out. Yeah. Now, there's other people. I have most, actually, most of my clients are not like this. Most of the clients that I ever trained did not feel better fasted. Most of them needed to eat something an hour or two before mm -hmm. because they felt better energy. In that case, eat something before. Now, what about eating afterwards? Okay, well, there may be some cases where because you have gut issues, the workout's inflammatory, probably better off waiting a couple hours after your workout. In other cases, you may this may be one of the ways you get your body to relax after it's already amped up from a workout because eating does put yourself it's in a- It's a parasympathetic uh, response. Yes, yeah, but so. boy, are we we start to really focus on well, these you, small things and it's such a waste of time. You hit it on the head. It's exactly, yeah. this is it. But perfect, perfect example we were just talking about with taking science, right? There's science out there to support the benefits of spiking the insulin before you go in it. You know who uses that science all the time? People that sell pre-workouts. Yep. You know who uses the science about post-workout? People that sell shakes, protein bars, and post-workout yep, stuff. Yep. They use that science to support the argument of why they're selling this product to you. At the end of the day, I have never had a client where the, using one of those products was a game changer in their results. Yeah, you, I'll give you guys, here's a, uh, here's a great example, actually. We, uh, years ago, we talked to a top trainer for professional athletes. And there were a couple things that they said that were so illuminating. Okay, so let's use basketball players, for example. Basketball players, professional basketball players, are usually huge, right? They're like six foot seven or taller, big dudes. Uh, oftentimes, they have fucked up looking feet because either the shoes don't, you know, it's hard to find size 15 shoes, and especially when you're 17 years old or whatever. So they cram their feet into other shoes, and they've got messed up toes, and they've got weird biomechanics. And I remember talking to this trainer. I was like, oh, do you work a lot on like foot connection and mobility and correcting, you know, how, you know imbalances in their feet? And he goes, no, they became professional athletes because they learned how to compensate so well. If I back them out of their compensations, they're not going to perform well anymore. And we're going to go backwards and it's, it's going to, I'm going to shoot myself, you know, no pun intended in the foot. Here's another example, talking to him about nutrition. I, you know, I'm like, have you ever thought about telling your athletes who have this ritual of eating, you know, this particular bad meal, like cheeseburgers and chicken nuggets before every game? Have you ever thought about giving them better nutrition? And he goes, No. I might give them better nutrition, which will help them physically, but psychologically, they're so attached to their ritual of eating their cheeseburger and nuggets that that'll mess them up 
even more. So this is the stuff that you need to always consider. So the answer to this particular question is, do you feel better eating before or after? That's the right answer. Forget what the science says about insulin or whatever. It doesn't matter nearly as much as which one makes you feel better. Well, the, and the truth is what you just highlighted is what supplement companies know this. And so they once they get you on that ritual, then that's enough excuse just to keep it going. Because totally. It's like, oh, I always do my pre-workout shake <laughs> and I feel the best when I do that. And when I go get that thing right afterwards, I always feel the best. So Sal, I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm like, yeah, they got you, bro. <laughs> they already yeah. got you. Yeah, and it's funny because I noticed the same thing. If I don't eat, like I'm more focused and I'm more into yes. the, the workout. And so for some people, they they haven't really trained their their mind to kind of get into that zone and space. And so they need that like energy. And so they focus on getting through the workout instead of really like hyper focusing on the intent of the exercise. So there's like yeah. there's a lot more to it, but it's definitely individual yeah, variants the, the, all just, across the board. Justin, the science is clear. Eating a couple hours before will improve your performance. Guess what? I feel better fasted. So what am I going to follow? I'm yeah. going to eat. I'm going to go fasted into the workout. That's right. Yeah. That's the right answer. And I think that's what people need L to understand. You gotta listen to your own body. Listen to your body. Absolutely. Next question is from Ernie Meyer. What do you think about carnivore or meat-based protein powders? I, I love them. I think they're great. Like other protein powders. I don't know if I've had them. They're not bad. You know what the, you know Be what's beef based protein? Yeah, you know what's you know what's good about them? Now there's always there's always of course supplement companies like to do this. They like to compare proteins. Which yeah. one's better? Which one has a better amino acid profile? Okay, here's what the there's a couple things we need to consider. If your protein intake is high, it kind of doesn't matter. So like for example, plant protein versus animal protein. Animal protein, far more effective at stimulating muscle growth and recovery. However, if the protein is high enough, it stops it stops mattering. It really doesn't matter anymore. This is true for all proteins. Now, what's the benefit of meat-based protein powder? There's a lot of people that are that have digestive issues from, yeah. in particular, whey protein or well, dairy protein. I, I feel like that's how you would want to kind of assess yes. whether or not like it's a good fit for you is like how well you receive and digest it. Uh, and you know, and in terms of like getting protein from natural sources and from you know your diet specifically is always going to you know far su surpass like getting it from protein powders but yeah to be able to you know assimilate it and, and be able to digest it properly would be like a priority also if you like it i mean that's one of the reasons why i continually still use ways that it I, tastes good yeah, it tastes good yeah. it's like if, if if i have like the, it's the end of the night you're right? a big taste guy yeah i am a big taste guy it's like <laughs> If it's the end of the night and I am a little under on my protein intake and my stomach's ground, I'm watching movies and I want to go down, I'm like, oh, I really want to go get some popcorn right now. And I'm like, damn it, I know I should, I should, what I should do is I need more protein. I'm not going to make myself a meal. Okay, I should probably go have a shake. The, the less I like taking that shake, the less likely I am going to do it in that situation. True. And the more likely, I'm not going to go have my my protein powder that is chalky and flavorless. And even though it's healthier and better for me and the mm -hmm. science supports that it's, this is that much better than this protein by 2%. If I don't like it and it, it, I'm not going to, I'm not likely to make that decision in that moment. And I know that that decision is more important to me than the the splitting hair difference between all the different protein powders. Mm -hmm. If I don't enjoy it and I don't like it at all, and I'm and I have a moment like that, which these moments happen quite often in in a, in a lifetime, I want something that I'm like, oh yeah, you know what? I'll go make my my peanut butter banana whey protein shake that I like. Like I could do that instead Dude, of my. I rem and that's I rem happened to me a lot of times, that exact scenario I just painted. That's a great you. way to use it. That's how I think most people should use protein yeah. powders rather than relying on them throughout the day. End of day, how much more do I need? And then you you take it. I remember once as a kid buying, and I never did this again, strawberry flavored protein powder. And they don't really make them that often, right? They yeah. don't anymore. It's Why always chocolate vanilla because it's gross. It's, yeah. It's never it good. Awful. I liked the uh, the Myoplex one back in the day. Oh. I, I mean, like, strawberry milk, though. I uh, love strawberry milk. Actually so that's why I like it. Oh, my God. It. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, Nestle I, oh, I love it, If they could have made it like that, then I would have been in, but it never tasted like that. No, but yeah, I remember I had it and it was totally disgusting. Here, the, okay. Here's where protein quality matters if your protein intake is low. So if you're somebody that doesn't eat your 0.6 grams of protein per pound of body weight or more, now you want to start to pay attention to protein quality. So, and where is this? Well, you say that a lot. Does that mean like, okay, let's say, let's just say my my number's 200 I need to hit and I'm at 170 and I'm debating between vegan or meat source yeah. or whey 
and they're all three going to take me up to 200, is it all equal at that point? Or yes. are you talking about if I if now- If you take it and you're still low. Okay, yeah. so that's where it matters. If the total is under, because and again, the studies point to generally about 0.6 grams per pound of body weight. So in other words, lean same scenario, but I'm at 75 grams per It'll day. It'll take you to 100. And this will only take me to 100. If I'm going to definitely be under on my protein, it does make a difference on which one is more valuable in that case. Yes. Yeah, so this is, for example, we talked to somebody a while ago who her kidney, she only had one kidney and her nephrologist said, you can't eat more. Right. I think 60 grams of protein. In that case, it makes sense. Or let's say you're a vegan, or maybe not even a vegan, or you know somebody who just eats a low-protein diet, because vegans will always have plant proteins, then, then it makes a lot of sense. But if your protein intake's high, it, it honestly doesn't matter. And if your protein intake's high, the number one thing you should focus on is digestibility. How well does this, does this digest? Does it make me feel okay? In that case, it makes the you know that that's that's the thing that makes the biggest difference. But Pro if you're hitting your high protein, it, it doesn't make it. Supplement companies have done such a good job at promoting uh, bars and shakes that I know people that will. This was really uh, popular in the you know um, bodybuilding community where they'll be at their protein intake and the, over, and they'll still eat bars and shakes yep. on top of that. I'm like, what a waste of money! Like, why would you do that? I know. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I mean, think okay, when whey protein became a thing. Uh, in the supplement space. Designer protein was one of the first ones to come out. And it was this big thing. And oh my God, whey protein, it's so high in glutamine. It's so high in branched amino acids. And it's true. It's one of the highest quality proteins on a gram per gram basis versus anything else. Other companies had to figure out how to differentiate themselves. So what'd they do? Oh, well, we have whey protein isolate. Uh, we have pre-digested uh, whey protein. We have you know whey protein hydro hydrolysate or whatever. And oh no, it's fast absorbing. You need protein before bed that's slow absorbing. Slow, yeah. Casein is Casein. the way to do. This is just how they differentiate themselves. But if your protein intake's high, it doesn't matter. Really doesn't make a difference at all. Take the one that works with uh, best. Excuse me with your digestion. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our guides. We have guides that can help you build muscle or burn body fat or improve your health and longevity. Again, it's Mind Pump Free. Com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump Sal and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.